August 2nd, 2005. A call comes in to 911. Paso County 911. This guy was run over by a truck. The guy threw it in reverse and backed over in about 20 mile an hour. He's unconscious. His scalp steel clear back from his skull. Bleeding real bad. Is he breathing? He's breathing, yes, ma'am. Okay. Paramedics arrive and find the victim is still alive. He is rushed to the hospital with massive injuries. Deputies transport the driver of the truck to the sheriff's office for questioning. This here is Michael Martinez. The victim, 30-year-old Michael Martinez, grew up in the same neighborhood where he was run over. He worked in construction and had a close relationship with his family. Michael had family that loved him. He had a sense of humor. He enjoyed the holidays. Michael also had some trouble with the law. You know, he was no angel. He made mistakes. Uh, I've, I've gone rounds with Michael. Um, but uh, it didn't stop me from fighting for him to get a little justice. The driver of the truck is 39-year-old Nathan Robbins, a neighbor and friend of Michael's. Nathan Robbins' rap sheet is extensive. Robbins had crimes ranging from burglary, theft. He had some traffic violations. I'm not sure there's a time in Nathan Robbins' life where he was not in trouble. Before Porter can interview Nathan, he learns from the hospital doctors could not save Michael's life. The case is now officially a homicide. Nathan didn't know that Michael was dead, and I felt that that could be an advantage. <laughs> the good news is he's at the hospital getting work done. If Nathan Robbins wasn't going to ask me, I wasn't going to tell him. Uh, it's easier to get a confession to somebody being hurt than it is to somebody being dead. <laughs> Nathan Robbins appeared like he was trying to be upset. The whiny voice, the high pitch, it was overdone. First of all, if at any time you change your mind and you don't like my attitude or whatever, you tell me to goes off, okay? How do you know Mike? That's my best friend. We learned that Nathan Robbins had been in a fight with Michael Martinez the night before. It doesn't take an overly creative mind to say, well, if you were fighting the day before, um, and now this man's dead. So what's this argument with you and Mike last night? He was wrong. It was ridiculous. He wasn't making sense. I don't understand. We're all used to it. He's always drunk. It's important for him to feel that I understand his situation. It's important for him to feel that I even empathize with it a little. It doesn't sound like he's a very reasonable person when he drinks, is it? No, no, not when he drinks. Walk me through this morning a little bit. I was a little late, and uh, I pulled out and I left. So I look in my room mirror and I see my and I seen him wave, so I figured he wanted to talk. So I figured I'd back up to him to talk to him. So I put it in reverse. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I thought I just hit the fit. And then I just lost my mind. I couldn't believe what happened. He was all bloody. Mistakes happen, just slow, slow down for me, take a deep breath. Porter senses that Nathan is beginning to break down. His legs were slightly spread, his body was hunched over slightly. That is when you go home for the confession. I gotta tell you, I think he made a couple of mistakes this morning, but I think it's time to man up, step up to the plate. I wasn't able to hurt him. I'm not saying you were. 
I didn't have time this morning. He, he's bugging me. I, you know, okay. and I've had enough of him. Last night was enough, you know, and so I was aggravated that, with that's him. That's fair enough. I think the last thought through your mind was, I need to get to work, I gotta take care of my family, I don't have time to f with this guy. And I yeah, know, I had those thoughts going. I think while your mind was busy going on those thoughts, your foot was busy on the accelerator. I'm not a bad guy, you know, I, 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 I just... Yeah, I was in a hurry. Yeah, no, I don't think you're a bad person, but I do think you are a good person that made a mistake. I'm a homicide detective, right? You know, I deal with those things. My like kid. Did. You said you're a homicide detective. It was not my intention to tell Nathan at the time that Michael was dead. And I was gonna try to play it off, quite frankly, but there was no moving past it. He did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god, I killed somebody! Oh my god, I killed my best friend! Oh my god, I need... Oh my god. <laughs> I'd like to request a lawyer at this time. When a suspect lawyer's up, the interview's over. It's done. Oh my god, I don't know what to do. Oh, <laughs> Sir, I, honest to God, I did not mean to hurt Michael. He was calling me back in the room, but you know what? I, it's not my job to be his priest, and it ain't my job to be his psychologist. It's the worst thing in the world. I, I gotta be done talking to you now, brother. I mean, once you request an attorney, my time with you is over, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I could go back in time, would I have done something different right in that point of time? Absolutely. I made a mistake. I, I said homicide detective. I should have said something else. It still bugs me. But you learn from every interviewer. It's what makes you a good interviewer. You know, I take something home from every interview. Despite not getting a full confession, Porter has enough evidence to charge Nathan with vehicular homicide. He had ample opportunities to hook his wheel a little to the left, a little to the right, hit his brake, even let off the accelerator. Any one of those things would have saved Michael Martinez's life. His family didn't deserve to have to bury their son long before he had an opportunity to even make amends. I like to believe that Michael was filled with potential. Nathan stole that potential.